Hey everybody, Psychosaurus is here and today I want to talk about the Empire Points. How do you earn them and mainly where do you spend them? So first, Empire Points are these blue icons up here as you can see in these crowns and it's like a second currency I guess. It, it's just another currency here in Age of Empires Online which you earn by number one playing quest obviously the amount rewarded depends on the difficulty rating and cooldown of the quest so that's the main way to earn them other than that you have daily rewards then you have also the seasonal rewards in Creed and Sparta and I think when there is some competition on forums or on Discord, you might be able to earn some Empire Points there as well. But these are the main ways to earn them in game. Now, yeah, the main point of this video is gonna be about where do you spend them because you just earn them and now you need to know where to spend them because there are quite a few things where you might spend them and which where do you start so number one thing and you should start with this one top right corner there is a, this chess button when you click on it this will open your empire vault and the empire vault starts with I think it's 24 slots so half of this window you see here which is like half of the chest if you click on this expand Vault button. Unfortunately, it's disabled for me because I have fully expanded the vault up to 240 slots. But if you click on it, you'll have multiple options to choose from how many slots to purchase for the Empire Points. I think the most expensive one is like 1000 Empire Points, but it's like the whole chest, which is 48 slots. And that that's a lot of slots. Now, why do you want to do that? Empire Vault is your global, global inventory. So no matter what if you're playing as, you have access to the Empire Vault. You will just open it and all the items you put there, they'll be there. As a matter from which if you put it there, it will be available to all the Sifs. You know? Whatever you have there, the Sifs will have access to it. So if I put this as Fandia Divine Breastplate here and I locked off, logged in as let's say Egyptian then I would open the vault, I would find the Esfandia breastplate in the vault so it, it's a nice way to move your items from one safe to the other now obviously there are some restrictions what items you can move so beware of those I think you just hover over them and notice the can't be traded text in the tooltip you can see it you, you see like no no source marble material and in yellow can't be traded so notice that because that means I cannot add it to the vault yeah this belongs to like these materials some items that are bound like let's see which one did I use this one see can't be traded again this item cannot be added to the empire vault yeah it, I've, it's written there as well right yeah at the bottom of the tooltip it's written there as well yeah global inventory worth expanding because it's available to all of your safes so that's empire vault now number two where you can spend your empire points is the empire store this building which you get sometime during the leveling the early levels yeah and this one is somewhat expensive but there might be something nice to use first notice these so the classic legendary treasure chest Celeste legendary mystery epic advisor epic treasure i think these are available during the weekends only i think they still are i don't know i feel like they shouldn't be here already, but maybe it's too soon. Maybe it's still counting for the weekend. Doesn't matter. When you see them, don't buy them. They, they are 
Number one, they are very expensive, as you can see, like 500 for Classic, 1000 for Celeste, 350 for Big Advisor, 100 for Epic Item. Who wants Epic Items? Come on. <laughs> they are easy to get. Why would you spend your Epic Points here? Otherwise, I would kind of get it, but it's random, okay? So it's like gambling. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that unless you're rich. Then it's just for fun. So yeah, don't do those. But the, then you have like these consumables for empire points. I think the strongest one you should notice is the labor of the empire and resources of the empire over here. These are very powerful empire points you can use during quests. I am not saying to do that because I feel like it's like a cheat code that you can use during quests and I don't feel right about it. But if you're okay using them well what can I do about it it's your problem not mine but then also there are some of the boosts like the wisdom of the empire I think it, I think it should be just one one wisdom of the empire not free like this is expensive you just use one and then pretty much you can level all the saves who would need free but you can get one for free during the Norton Hold questline, so you don't really need those. But it's an option as well. And then we got the warehouses here. Now these are the biggest warehouses you can get, 24 slots. And you know, inventory is also like some kind of resource you have, right? You're limited on it. Now obviously I mentioned the Empire Vault. This one, what's the difference about it? these grand warehouses? Well, number one, it's only for your current sieve. It's not for all of your sieves. So that's why I re recommend Empire World first, because that's available for all of your sieves. So these should be like... This should have lower... And what's the word? Uh, priority. Yeah, lower priority. You should just get your Empire World. These should be just secondary. It's just 24 slots. You can find like 20 slots during quests. Maybe a little bit unlucky if you if you don't get them, but hey, you should still be able to drop them. So that's just four slots. They don't cost you Empire points, but you need materials. Not for these. Okay, so depends what what you are rich on. But if you want a maximum inventory space in your current save then yeah you have these options as well and you can see I have few 24 slots storehouses doesn't matter which one you pick these are just save themed so if you want just general one which you can see over here I have one and you can just pick one from the one save specific one or you might wait for event to run around and just buy the event themed 24 slots as well. I think I have one over here, yeah. The haunted warehouse. That's also an option and not no need to spend the empire points here, but if you have some spare empire points and you feel like you like the inventory, this is an option. Okay, number three, we're gonna move here to the Empire Bazaar. If you don't know what this building is about, it's like now it's not as necessary but it's rather a place where the Marcus Pollux is but this used to be a store where you would put purchase the premium and pro saves the uh, access to the Empire World as well and the quest packs like the Babylon and Norton Holt now during the Project Celeste everything is unlocked well almost everything but the main stuff is unlocked if you scroll down here, you might notice, I think it's the Summer Grab Bag, Celebration Grab Bag, and I think the Bushes and Topiary, and maybe the Ornaments as well. I don't remember what's available here, but some of these things are not available, so you can purchase them. Now when you purchase them, you might notice like nothing happened, you, don't, you didn't get anything. You need to log off and log in to actually have the effect. The nice thing is, if you purchase it one, it will be available to all of your saves. 
I think you need to go to Marcus Pollux to get the to get the items, and then you will just place like stores like these. You'll get decorations. I don't know what what the exact stuff is like. That there's a lot of stuff you get, but you get like these stores where you can spend some coins for decorations. See, it's it's a nice thing. It's not that necessary, but it's a nice way to get some to get access to some decorations if you wanna make your city prettier okay that was number three number four will be milestones now you you selected your milestones now you're not really happy about them you wanna change your milestones you don't like like let's say num milestone number four on your current save what can you do about it? Well, one option is deleting your Sif. Uh, yeah, you might be level 40, you don't really want to level up again, you just... And also you got some legendary items, now you don't want to restart it. Uh, you don't want to start from the zero. And that's understandable. So the other way for you to restart these milestones is down here. You can see the thousand empire points tag here. And the reset button here. If you press the reset button, it will ask you if you want to reset your milestones. The five thousand empire points is the price of the reset. When you do, when you do it, though, you will be asked to log off and then log log back in. If you do that, you will find out that these milestones have been reset, and you you'll find the the empty. Little icons again, just, just like when you were selecting them for the first time, you will have the same icons there. Then you just click on them and re-select your milestones. It's a good way if you feel like you want to use some other milestones. You like, I don't really like this milestone. I want to try this one, and you don't really want to delete your save, and you just have some M5 points on your hand. Yeah, that's a good way. Maybe you selected milestones and didn't know which ones are the good ones. And then you saw some guide. And hey, now you see why this is bad. So now you want to restart it, but you don't want to delete yourself. Yeah, this is the way for you to restart milestones. Don't do it too often. It is, it's quite expensive, okay? If you just play it once, you realize, hey, this if I got the milestones wrong. I need to reset it. Yeah, this is the way. Is is it worth? Totally, because before you couldn't restart your milestones. Okay, so be happy that there is a way to reset your to restart your milestones without deleting your save. Better better than not being able to. Okay. Okay, number number five, and for that we need to move to the Vanity Island. And here, well, you'll find Vanity that costs Empire Points in the stores. And that's all there is to it. So you just go to the store. If you get me in the island, into the island, so you find some store. You click on it. Here you'll find the Vanity items. If you don't know what vanity items are, it's like a gear for your units, but the effect is only visual. It doesn't affect their stats or anything like that. And where do you find the vanity gear you have? You go here to the view gear or gear hole in your capital city. You click here on the vanity, and here you'll find the vanity arm, armory, and what vanity is available to you. Now to equip it, uh, it's just a, like a normal gear, you just select it, place it on your unit, the unit will not get the visuals. Now obviously you have three of those here, which is one for weapon, one for shield, and one for helm. And you have a lot of sets here. If you want to know what it looks like, one way is buy the item and put it on the unit you want to see it on. But that's obviously gonna cost you some small amount of empire points. The other way is just take a look at these showcases and see what the items look like. 
and you obviously have these units here to show you what it looks like as well. So if you have size of Roy with the construction set on them, this is what it's gonna look like. Okay. Now be careful. So some of the items might be a little bit confusing, like putting vanity on the champion. Sometimes they use axe, sometimes they use the sword of the vanity. It's a little bit confusing, I don't know. I never know which one's which, so for champions you might want to check it out. <laughs> and then there's also this store which gives you some city decorations. I think there are wonders, wells, and I think also towers, yeah, and some other stuff. This is the only store here that, that where you pay with Empire Points. Uh, vanity Island is not the only place where you can get Vanity, you can also get some Vanity in the Alliance cities like Kartag, Delos or the Farafra Oasis. Yeah, you can you can purchase their Vanities, their Residences for, for the Empire Points, that they are the option as well. All this does is just visuals for these units, really not necessary thing, but if you just wanna make some dress up competition yeah this is an option okay that was i think number five so we're moving for number six which is here in sparta and this is something late game and that's the sparta reforge the spartan forge yeah what this is about is you drop some nice legendary item but you see, it has pretty bad stats. So, what are your options? Use it with the bad stats, but you'll feel sad because it's a good legendary, but it's got terrible stats. You just want to somehow make it better. Well, that's where the Reforge comes in. You take the item, you put it right here, and here you'll see the power level. And this shows, depending on the stats, how good the stats are. Actually, this one is something like an average of the stats. If you have multiple stats, okay. Here you will see what the reforge costs. Now, when you pre press the reforge button, there are two things that are gonna happen. Number one, the item will get bound to your current safe. So that means you cannot move it from this safe to the other anymore through the e Empire Wall. You cannot send send it to your other safes, you cannot sell it to other players. It's bound to your to your safe, okay? So make sure if you're reforging it that you're on your correct safe you wanna you wanna put the item on. So that's one thing. The second thing, this is like you're gonna drop the same item but with different stats. So just because you're reforging it doesn't mean that you get guaranteed better result. No. This actually means you're gonna get a new item with different power level and obviously this can move up but it can also move down. And sometimes it doesn't even move at all. That can happen as well. So yeah, careful with that. This is rather when you have some spare empire points. And I would recommend if the power level is really low, it might be really worth to reforge the item to get it at least to the average values. If you are about above average, I think that's pretty good power level for your item. So I don't really feel I think you should reforge that one. And another thing, with every reforge, the cost of the reforge on the current item increases. So you can see this one costs 250. And if I reforged it, the next reforge is going to cost 500. And if I reforge it again, that's going to cost 750. So I have one item here. And I've reforged it a couple times. You can see I've reforged it twice so now the next reforge is gonna cost me 750 so it's like the number of reforge times 250 empire points 
if you're gonna reforge it like once, twice, it's still gonna be expensive, but it still might work out for you. And I'm gonna say if you're going if you're going for the reforges, don't do it more than three times. Otherwise it's just gonna be too expensive and it's not gonna be worth anymore. But if you feel lucky, maybe you can go for the fourth one. If you have enough empire points. It's your problem, not mine. Again. <laughs> it's playing with RNG, okay? Test your luck if you feel like to. But I am saying don't do it. Okay, now for another thing I need to log out actually. And that's what you find here when selecting the saves. And that's you can rename your capital city name. Depending on which save you select here. You click on this arrow button over here if you haven't ever noticed it. It's right here. This little button. You click on it and here's the button rename. So you click on it, you write the name here and it will cost you 100 empire points. So there's another way to spend your empire points. Use it if you don't really like it, the name of the city you gave to, to your safe city, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you don't really use this one. Okay, and last thing that I need to mention, and it's also very important, that's skipping quests. Now, for this to be available to you, you need to be level 40 on that save to be actually able to skip quests. Otherwise, you're not you're not gonna be allowed to skip quests. Now, one thing I need to mention: the only quests you can skip are the quest line quests, the the main quest line quests. Okay. So you can see, like, I have some Argos quests here. Like, stop the sea people. That's a main quest line or maybe it's side quest but the the thing that you should notice is number one it's not a repeatable quest you cannot skip repeatable quests okay number two it's not a global quest you cannot skip global quests and you can see it here I have a global one here I ha have a global repeatable one repeatable one here if I select a repeatable quest and say this, you can see I cannot skip it. You cannot skip those, okay? It needs to be a regular quest, just a normal quest, not repeatable, not global. Now the price is depending on the recommended level of the quest. So you can see this quest recommended level is 26 if I press the skip you can see the price is actually 10 times the recommended level so that's 260 empire points now that's up to you if you have a lot of empire points to spare you can just skip those is it good well you're gonna save time from playing a boring quest like this one like the Argos quests are pretty boring okay so Saving that time might be worth, but I can also say if you just play that quest, you're gonna save the empire points for skipping. So it's up to you. Do you feel like you don't want to play that quest, then, and you have some spare empire points? You can just skip it, okay? If you don't have enough empire points, well, you can only play it. <laughs> yeah, it is just another way to spend them. And I hope I did not miss anything, but if you feel like I've missed something where you can spend your Empire Points, I don't think there was anything else, it's just these few things. There's a bunch, but yeah, to recapture, number one thing you should spend your Empire Points on, the Empire Vault. Remember, expand it as much as possible first. And then it's just up to you. I would say the most important ones would be the milestones. If you pick the wrong milestones, restart them. On the 
and reselect them. And make sure to select the correct ones. Otherwise, if you feel like experimenting, make sure you're rich enough to actually keep resetting those milestones. Otherwise, don't do it, okay? Just do it once, that's if you're done. And did I forget something? Store, bazaar, bazaar. These are like up to you. These are optional. You, you can ignore them if you feel like you need the inventory space for your currency. If, yeah, the warehouses are there. So, yeah, you can spend it on those warehouses. It's not completely necessary to spend those empire points there, but if you want the extra inventory slots, go ahead. That could be anything. So, Empire Store, Empire Bazaar, don't really have to. It's just a way to get some nice decorations for your city. There was four Vanity Islands, if you just want to make pretty, not necessary. Reforge, that's rather a late game thing if you want to get better stats on your items. Renaming, I mean, not, not necessary, okay. Maybe if you're not happy about the name now, but yeah, it's not necessary, but it's quite cheap, okay. And uh, yeah, skipping quest. I would I would say only if you don't want to spend the time on the quest and have enough points. So yeah, like like I said, vault, maybe warehouses, milestones, and reforging for later stages. I would say those are the most important ones. With vault being number one, warehouses maybe number two. But I would say milestones are more important. So yeah, tell me what you think. Did I miss something? Like this, share this. Share it mainly to the people who don't know how to spend their empire points, okay? And uh, yeah, remember to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye!